Troops loyal to South Sudan's President Salva Kiir celebrate the failure of what they claim was an attempted coup d'etat by his former deputy. After two days of violent clashes, the government of Mr Kiir says it's defeated rogue army factions loyal to Raik Mashar, who until recently was the country's vice president. One, we are then a jack. In a live TV broadcast, the intelligence minister read out the names of 10 high-profile former officials arrested for their role in the plot. The list included no fewer than three former cabinet ministers, all of whom were dismissed along with Mr. Mashar in July. The government claims casualties on both sides have been light, but the head of the United Nations peacekeeping mission says as many as 500 may have died, with even more injured in the fighting. The UN also estimates up to 13,000 people are now seeking refuge at their headquarters in the capital, Juba. Lacking sufficient food, shelter and above all water, many now fear unless more supplies arrive soon, the situation could become critical. Addressing a crowd of refugees, a government spokesman assured them the danger had passed and urged them to go home. But with reports of continued clashes across the city, almost all have chosen to stay with some openly pleading for an end to the violence. I'm asking these people, especially the leaders of South Sudan, to have unity at least, to unite these people of South Sudan, to make them one people, eh? one country, with one heart, one family. This is my message to them, because I don't see the reason of killing innocent people, for no reason. Mr. Mashar's current whereabouts are unknown, but the government says it believes he escaped the fighting with a number of rebel troops and some stolen cattle. Despite an appeal for restraint by the UN, many now believe President Keir will seize this opportunity to eliminate his most stubborn opponents. The crisis, coming just two and a half years after independence, highlights the ethnic and political grievances which divide this country. With a powerful opposition movement still at large, backed by heavily armed troops, peace may still be some way off. Chris Wade, Sky News.